Good morning everyone, this is Rocco coming at you with 10.69.2. Just installed this update and we are going for a ride to Saluda, North Carolina. This is the first test I did on 69.1 and we're going to see if there are any differences on this test. And um, so there were a number of improvements with 69.1 on this, uh, but there are also a number of issues as well that uh, were causing problems such as phantom braking on that version. Um, I didn't get to do a lot of testing on 69.1.1, but uh, I did notice it was definitely not worse and if anything, it was better. Uh, so this should hopefully mean better still. Um, a lot of you are commenting on my squeaky um, suspension. Uh, you all can blame Tesla for that. Uh, not explicitly because the car is suspension has failed with the upper control arm, but I went drove two hours away to our service center in Charlotte, North Carolina, waited three hours. That's uh, I, my appointment was three hours before that, and I waited, and they couldn't fix it. All they need it still phantom braked at that same spot right there. No cars, so that hasn't been fixed. Um. So I waited three hours and they, wow, it phantom braked again here. I wonder if, so someone commented last time on the same route where I phantom braked like that and maybe that my cameras fogged up. So I checked before I left and my cameras were not fogged up. Uh, the B pillars are known to be in fogged up. So that is a possibility that happened, but I'm not sure. Of course it wasn't, exactly rain this is just a light sprinkle for rain so hopefully it doesn't disable us here but um uh I, that really shouldn't affect it full cell driving does fine in the rain you saw a couple videos ago that i drove in heavy rain um fortunately it doesn't let us enable it in heavy rain but it drives just fine and past experience in closed beta they allowed it in the rain and it drove just fine um so if you did not see the other Saluda video, this is about the same lighting conditions too, and basically the same type of weather. Maybe just, you know, a little bit more rain, just a tiny bit more rain. Um, but so far, it seems exactly the same in a, a bad way because of the phantom brakes. Uh, there is less traffic, this being a Sunday versus a, I think it was a Monday, was it Monday morning? I, or tu Tuesday morning, I think it was. I think it was Tuesday morning. Or Wednesday morning. I don't know. It was a weekday. Um, so we had a lot more traffic. So let's see if this has improved any. Nope. I'm going to press the accelerator. So it thinks the stop sign right here is on my side of the road. So I'm going to actually go ahead and see if I can press the snapshot button for that this time. And see if I can get it to uh, properly do that. So it does look like routing... Um, for um, a nav is much quicker. That must have been a bug in the previous version. They must have corrected that. That was very frustrating from my point of view. To have nav take so long to reroute. Interesting. So that's new. That I don't know if that was due to the rerouting or that was, if that was something else. But it, it's never s kind of slowed down so aggressively at that corner before. But as you can see here on the map, <laughs> the map data in Saluda is not good. Um, it just goes all over the place. Um, it is better than it has been. It's had two map updates since the first time I tested this route. This is just a very basic route uh, for a very small town in the mountains of North Carolina. But, uh, yeah. Turn left onto We're going to see if we can make this turn again. This is always the... I think the hardest part of this entire test is making this turn because it's such a, like, if you, I, it's hard to tell um, from the front here, that white sign in front is the turn. turn you can't really tell there's a turn right here. Um, so that must, like, you can tell now. Okay, so it made it again. That's great. Uh, the biggest issue with that <laughs> is that, um, Let's see, is it gonna stop at our point here? Your destination is on the left. Okay, so we need to cancel this. Um, so that was not a disengagement. 
and we're just gonna try and route us back across the highway here. Just do a full loop. Um, I do wonder when you're up this early on a Sunday morning in this. So I'm sure everyone's up getting ready for church. Um, let's see. I want to make sure I can make this stop sign here. Now turn left onto Andrews Street. Let's see if it's gonna make it. It's interesting. It sees both stop signs. This the stop sign on the left is new here. Nope. Okay, so that was a disengagement. And I, I blame it on the fact that I probably engaged um, earlier. Didn't have enough time to think about it. That happened before. And I didn't have enough time to think about it. Um, if it wasn't for the school bus last time on 69.1 on this route, it almost certainly would have had zero disengagements for the first time. Um, so while we got a disengagement there, this definitely still seems to be the best it's ever been. I, I don't notice anything different uh, so far. It seems like the changes for 69.1, or yeah, 69.1, sorry, 69.2, you know, all these numbers here, uh, is that, watch here. So this is a good example also of a B pillar limitation going to scene for that grass right there uh, that it's included. In the winter time is no problem. In the summertime, a bunch of grown up shrubs and grass. Uh, you can't really control for that per se. It's not, not like you're going to force everybody in the entire country to go cut their corners. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's we'll see how it does here. Um, has the creep wall that seems to be back a little bit i wonder if they moved the creep wall back just a tiny bit because that did seem to be a problem that's excellent excellent behavior what why is it going that direction okay so that's not a designation that's just poor map routing i don't know why it decided to go back that way i was waiting until it reroutes there you go that was not going to be a disengagement. I don't know why it decided to route that way. It's never routed that way before. Um, but yeah, let's let it continue going through Saluda here. That's interesting. It has tried the route down to the left right here. You can't really see it, but it's just a, just a dirt path, basically. I mean, that has a road. You see how it narrows out right there? It's basically just a dirt path. It does connect into the main road, but that's not a road I would want to go down, personally. So it braked for that. See, I'm not. I'm not touching anything. It braked entirely for that yellow, um, blinking yellow right there. Uh, so that's. Uh, I, th I think it went all the way through last time. So that being said, I did feel the same behavior last time. And, and it's um, it's interesting to me that it, Chuck Chuck Cook has the same issue. If you see it as double. Um, double green light issue and it's like it's a latency in the system it's like it goes past the light it's like maybe i should stop for that even though i'm already past it like it's it's like it doesn't realize it's already past the light uh and it just decides to stop it's interesting like but the 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 difference with this light is is a flashing yellow just means caution it means you can go through the light just be cautious that, that's all that means in that situation there. It doesn't mean, it's not a four way stop. It's not, it's not red. So you don't actually have, have to stop there. Um, but it's interesting how it has that latency. I think those are the type of things that they were probably gonna work on next. Again, um, uh, Tesla, if you're watching, FSD team, first and foremost, thank you for your hard work. Uh, this update's been incredible so far. Uh, I don't know what you guys have focused on next, but please, if you can, focus on speed limits or uh, lane selection. I, I, it always, you can call it easy. I know it's not easy. Uh, nothing's easy in this. Um, but I think that would make a world of difference in the more rural areas that have good speed limit control. Uh, that be able to like notice the sign up ahead before you get to it. Be able to slow down before you get to the sign so you're not going 10 15 miles over over the speed limit um, for it to like read the signs and currently it will pass speed limit signs and just not acknowledge them at all 
you know. So that that happens. Let's see it phantom brake for this car right here. Like a pretty hard one. Um, so this entire route, it's like same weather, same everything, and it's still phantom braking. We're going to see it once we get past the highway. So the, the last time we had a car coming down from the right, and that would definitely cause some phantom braking. Uh, I, I could see that's reasonable because it's like okay the car is it gonna intersect me and hit me uh, Let's try and break maybe maybe it is um, but this time there's no car coming Is it gonna break? Yep, look at that. Look how hard look how hard it breaks right there. That's exactly the same behavior exactly the same so that this I'm gonna call this route completely unchanged like nothing at all has changed between 69.1 and 69.2 um, in this route that is very important distinction. In this route, it has not changed. However, I think they've changed, adjusted, based, especially based on Elon's comment, they have adjusted pedestrian awareness, that type of stuff. There's probably some finicky things. Lisa, if you're watching, um, there probably is some finicky things, who knows, with the pedestrians. I personally didn't see a single one. Uh, the pedestrians actually were much improved in 69.1.1, or actually 69.1 in my case, but yeah. I think we're going to stop it there. This is going to be my first video. I'm going out to do three more today. But if you guys have questions for me, put them down below. If you're not already, I would appreciate uh, your subscribing and joining on for the journey for future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.